Hey, Dan Emoji here from Megascans. We have had a ton of requests to show how Moss has been created in our Megascans promotional renders. So in this tutorial, I want to go ahead and go over the process of using Megascans atlases with Forest Pack to create realistic Moss using Redshift for rendering. Uh, I want to go ahead and show how to build up the Moss cards quickly in ZBrush, how I set up the basic scattering system in i2's Forest Pack, and how to build up the layers of moss with some tips and tricks I've learned using the scans and scatter objects. Okay, so let's start out with Megascans Bridge. We'll use this to export our maps into Max and it will create our shader for us. Uh, just be careful not to have anything selected in the first slot of the material editor because uh, it might overwrite what's in there. Uh, next, I will build a really quick plane, equal sides, four segments is enough, and center it out, and go ahead and uh, export that so I can bring it into ZBrush. Okay, so we uh, import our plane and we will divide it up to a million polygons with smoothing turned off. Uh, once we have this, uh, we need to import our opacity map. So a quick little tip is through the bridge you can double click on the thumbnail and it'll navigate to your folder and so you can just copy that link and quickly paste it. Once the opacity is loaded, go over to the masking tab and find mask by alpha and hit mask by alpha. After that, hit the inverse button and that'll give us what we need to start working on. So since the moss cards are so tiny and so fine, we don't get the best shapes uh, right away. So I'll go ahead and hit grow and sharpen. And what happens is that the mask gets a little disjointed and it turns into islands and chunky. And we don't want that. We want solid, solid masks. So I'm going to go through and just paint them out real quick. No, you don't have to do this for other atlases like leaves and plants. Um, they'll work just fine. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is I'm checking to see if there's any like floaty um, bits that I need to erase or checking if any of the masks have joined together. Uh, so I'll erase them and separate them because I want them to be those individual pieces of moss. Uh, when I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and mask out the corners with the drag select mask. Uh, this is very important for later. Once we've done that, we'll go up to Make Poly Mesh 3D. Click on that. Don't worry, your masking and your geo is fine. Uh, go down to your subtool and split, split mask points. Now you have your geo separated, ready to export. So I bring the geo into Max and apply a UV modifier. I make sure that I'm in the front view and hit view line and fit and I flip the, the U tile and because of the bounding boxes that we made they act as guides uh, for the UV map to snap to so that's why they're there. So what I do now is check to make sure that none of the alpha is creeping off the, the side of the geo because now's a good time to go back and fix it in ZBrush and re-export. Um, after that, I'll detach the bounding box guides and apply a Pro Optimize, uh, making sure that I hit Keep Textures so I don't lose them. And I'll calculate. After that's done calculating, I usually use a value of 5 to 2%. Uh, the goal here is to keep the borders uh, from crunching in and so you preserve the, the alpha. Uh, after that's done, we're going to apply a Subdivide modifier. The goal here is to get a good distribution of polygons, uh, not too dense, but then enough polygons to give it detail. So you can bend them, uh, twist them. Uh, in the case of moss, we, we won't use it these bends and twists as much, but just so you know, it's very useful for doing other uh, atlases like leaves and plants, because this technique is very useful uh, for leaves and plants and other things as well. Um, when we're done with that, we'll go ahead and use this cool little script. Uh, I'll have a link in the description uh, 
to go get it. It's called Explode. It'll go through and detach every single element into its own object and then use uh, Max's rename tool and just name a moss, whatever, so it's easy to organize. So I'm gonna speed things up here a little bit because uh, we're just doing some basic lighting and rendering. Uh, what I'm doing is just making sure that the shader's working, everything's looking good, uh, nothing too fancy, just in the rendering, just brute force, brute force, uh, a redshift sun system, uh, and that's it. And just hit render and, and, and see how it looks. Uh, right out of the box, they're looking really cool. Now I'm gonna set up my Redshift Sprite shader. Uh, I use the original material imported from the bridge and I go and grab the cutout map and place it in the bitmap slot and leave it the default settings and it's good to go. What this does is prevents render times from getting too long when you have a lot of scattered cards with opacity maps in them. The next step is to set up our pivots and how we're going to do that is use a cool little script called get in line and so what we do is we uh, just drag the script into the viewport and it'll pop open. We'll have links to uh, go grab the script. It's from Joker Martini. It's really great. Uh, you take two pieces of geo and you spread them apart and it's pretty self-explanatory. You select um, all the other cards and hit distribute selected and it'll put them all nicely in a row. Uh, so it makes uh, editing them way easier. Now I'm going to set up the pivot points for each moss card. Uh, this is a crucial part in making the moss look accurate when it's scattered. Uh, to help me with this, I'm gonna up the texture resolution so it's easy to place the pivot accurately. I'm gonna place the pivot right under the fuzzy mossy area where it's green and right above the, the brown root area. Then after the pivots are adjusted, go ahead and move the pivot to the Z axis. Now's a good time to save out the moss in a master file just in case you need to change it later or uh, screw something up and, and need a backup. I'm gonna use the bridge to import the asset that I wanna work on. Uh, it has some great features, uh, great moss. It's uh, perfect for this little tutorial. So the goal is to build up layers of moss using the color information from the albedo as cues. So we see dark greens, light greens, oranges, browns, tans, and we want to replicate that in the scattering. So at this point, I'm gonna create my first forest pack, go to the geometry panel, go to i2 software, click on forest pro. I'm gonna go ahead and hit no on limiting uh, the scatter to camera, because uh, it doesn't really matter because in this small scene. Uh, I like to name my forest packs FP because some of my scenes I can have up to 30, 40 forest packs and having control over that is really important. So name them correctly. I'm going to add the geometry uh, through the list mode. Uh, it takes a second to load them all. Uh, when that's done, go ahead and delete the default plane that comes uh, standard when you make a new pack. I'm going to apply some basic settings just to get this going. Uh, scroll down to surface and change it to UV mode. Uh, then I'm going to change uh, the map to the fuzz map to drive where the moss actually shows up. And then after that, I'm going to change the units from 10,000 to 100 uh, just to get a basic idea of what's going on. I'm going to do a render just to get a baseline of color and look and feel, throw in a Photoshop just so I can get a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's rendered so there's no surprises with color correction. So this is my raw input, uh, pretty plain, doesn't look very good. 
So now we're going to start messing with it so it starts to feel more natural and real. The first thing I want to do is change uh, the density. So I take it down to 50 centimeters and then I go down to transform and enable translation, rotation, and scale. I also enable horizontal mirror. So after rendering, it looks pretty cool, but generally it's not working because there's not a lot of size variation. The moss is sticking straight up. There's only one color. So I'm gonna fix that. And the quickest way to fix that is adding in the dead moss. To add in the dead moss, we need to take the original setup and clone it out. Then I'm gonna take the shader and edit it in Material Editor, I'll copy it out. Uh, make sure you rename it. In this case, I renamed it to Dead, so I don't overwrite my original shader. Then I'll change my translucency weight to 0.2 to help minimize the appearance of light coming through the material. Then I'll add a color corrector to my albedo. Uh, using the hue tints, I'll change it to brown to, to influence the, the color. And what's nifty is you can use the eyedropper to get a pretty accurate color. I put it at a strength of uh, about 70%. We still want some of the original albedo showing through. Now I'm going to do a render to see how this looks. Before that, I want to adjust how the moss is standing up on the rock. Um, they, it should be laying down a little bit, so I'm going to change it in the, the Y direction just a little bit just so it's a little more dead and not as alive go ahead and render see what we get and you can tell right away that it's matching the color and tones a little bit more so it's starting to integrate to the asset a lot better and once some color correction is applied it, it's the dead moss is a little more married to how the albedo looks which is really good So obviously we can't have dead moss everywhere because it is not actually everywhere in the albedo. So what I've done behind the scenes is make a dead moss mask using uh, the brown and orange areas as a guide and loaded that in and, and rendered it out. And it will place the dead moss uh, more specifically to where it needs to be. The next step I'm gonna do is the exact same thing I just did with the brown moss, but for orange moss. Uh, change the color, uh, change the masking. Um, it's not very large, but it's just enough variation to make the moss look accurate, make it look interesting. Again, the albedo is the guide I'm going off of. So when I, if I see something, I try to emulate it uh, through this process. So orange moss, make a mask for it, change the color. Uh, then I'll go through and adjust the settings to make it feel more dead, make it lay down, make it more tussled. Uh, just think if it's dead, it shrivels up a little bit more because there's no water in it anymore. So you can have it slightly smaller. Um, you can see here that I'm toggling off the, the different layers to, to see uh, my results. So this is uh, just a little bit of orange in there help sell the fact that it is uh, more dead. Now I'm gonna go through and update my, my base layer to a variation layer. What the variation is gonna do is just add a little bit more uh, shapes, a little bit more interest to the moss, a little more chaos, as well as I'm going to add a, a darker moss. So the, it's the same procedure, I just go eyedrop. I, for this one specifically, I went in and uh, edited the original albedo because I just wanted a little bit more control. Uh, I tried both ways, both ways worked fine. I also like playing with the clustering under the density section, the forest pack. Usually have it between five and 20 centimeters and add in some roughness and blurry edge. Uh, here is an example that uh, my colleague Jan Major did a while back using exclusively clustering. He had a lot of different variations of plants and moss 
and use clustering to uh, bring them all together. So I'm gonna do some final adjustments on the base variation. I just wanna make it a little more dense and I wanna change the size and the rotation uh, just so it feels a little more chaotic and less uniform and uh, render it out and uh, see how it looks. So I'm happy with how this turned out. Uh, it feels very natural. Uh, the scattering's good, the size variation's good, the color variation's good. So the next thing I would do is bring in other assets that I want this moss applied to, uh, copy out the forest packs, apply it to those assets, and then switch out the masking. And then obviously there will be some adjusting to do based on uh, how the asset is, if it's a rock or a log, and, and how the, the transform should work. But generally, very quickly, you can build up your scene using this setup. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this. I try to keep it as simple as possible. I know there's other scattering uh, solutions out there. Uh, I wanted to keep this one kind of in the middle of how to do it with Forest Pack and just general concept of how to approach a complicated uh, mini ecosystem that is moss. Please leave your comments and questions below. I'd love to see them. Also, please leave your tips and tricks that you might have for your scattering solutions. Uh, remember to check out our YouTube videos. We're constantly putting up new content with tips and tricks and tutorials. And megascans.se, check it out. We're always putting up new content. Thanks, guys.